Hey guys, so today we are going to answer a subscriber question. And the question in question is... Frederick, is Node.js a secure language? So let's get into it. Now, the actual, like the literal question was, Frederick, is Node.js a secure language like PHP? Or something of that nature, if I recall correctly. Now, this was a comment question, as you can imagine. And it's kind. Of, it is a little bit funny. I, I'm. I'm not in any way ridiculing the person who is asking this. It's just because you know it's a genuine question. But it is actually kind of funny because the question, the comparison between you know JS security and PHP security. Well, it's basically the among, if not the most unsecure languages that you can possibly imagine if we're thinking about, depending on how you look at it, of course. But it's kind of funny where you, you compare the security of one of the least secure languages to the security of another of the least secure languages. Now, let me explain. So when it comes to Node.js, it's actually one of the biggest hurdles that I agree. Actually, there are things that need to happen in order for Node to become this enterprise language and a first-class citizen of say ser of server-side applications at, at larger scales and security although it may not be the most important thing i know there's a bunch of people out there who are going to think that this is weird but i'm sorry to say that security is very it's a second-class citizen, a citizen for a lot of companies. Now, the people who really care about security, I'm pretty sure that most of them would agree that Node is a bit of a risk. Why? So the reason why Node.js is considered to be quite a bit of a security risk is fundamentally because, well, there's a few other reasons as well, but one of the biggest reasons is that the way that the package system works makes it all but impossible for you to know whether or not your code has been compromised. Let me explain. So most of the scandals that NPM has been involved in and the package management system basically for Node uh, comes down to this idea of, well, it's basically open source. Because remember, NPM and like package, like Node, anybody can sit down at any time, any point in time and just commit code to a repository. And with, which makes, it's very easy to create a bunch of libraries. And for the most part, people are you know, contributing with useful things, right? However, that also means that people who are out to compromise systems have a fairly easy time doing so. There's a quite a few security loopholes in the different repositories out there. So that means, as an example, you can exploit le uh, pretty much um, coding errors, if you will, in different packages, as long as you know what people are using. And for the really, really large, like really popular libraries, if you find an exploit in that code, it's very likely that you will find applications who are using Node running that code and you can basically exploit it. There are exploits where you can traverse the file system and you can like uh, produce a denial of service attack with regexes and all this, this good stuff, right? But there's also another sort of problem where, though, although that is something that can absolutely happen, you also have the issue where people who are basically installing packages are also at risk because Node as a process allows you access to the file system when you're actually running it. Which means that if you are installing a package from some external source onto your system, you have no guarantees that that script, the code that you're pulling down, isn't doing something with your file system because of like um, you may or may not know that but there are these lifecycle event hooks into that you can hook into it's like pre-install is an, a favorite one for exploiters where you can run a script as the package is being installed onto somebody else's computer so when you're actually doing npm install and you're actually installing that once it's being downloaded it can actually fire off before the download is finished and it's very easy for you to drop in some malicious code there and do something or put something on somebody's computer or make a network request and stuff of this nature. There's ways to exploit how this works. Now, NPM and the Node community have been trying to address this by doing, like starting going kind of heavy, I would say, into security audits, and a security audit approach basically, where they audit and they have ways of auditing 
packages on the public repository. Now, that may be useful, and it is to a point where you can know that there are different security leaks in different packages, but you I mean they don't really control the packages, so they can't just go in and fix them. They have to just pretty much inform that this is a security risk after analyzing the code, and then they have, to, or at being tipped off about it, and then they kind of can just encourage people not to use that package. And that is also not really great because there's quite a bit of risk involved in that as well. And we can even go one further where versions of packages can also be compromised. There's a famous exploit that did happen not that long ago for a node package that was very popular and a very low level one where this private individual had been supporting this package for a while got tired of supporting it, gave it over to somebody else, and that person had the intent of using malicious code on other, peop on other people. So although the audit proce process will look and figure out whether or not you have malicious code in you know, the re released packages, it's not so concerned with backwards compatibility. In other words, if you have older versions, you can actually exploit those. You can republish or retag an old version of your code, publish that, and anybody who hasn't upgraded to the latest versions of that package will also get that malicious code. And then you can do a bit of trickery to actually rewrite the, git, the, the versioning history if you wanted to. And that's exactly what this person did. So, uh, there, that's the simple version, but you can go and look at the articles. It's, uh, it's a fairly famous exploit. So. When it comes to node security, it's pretty damn insecure at this point in time, depending on how you look at it. So the way that I really urge you to think about this is to basically only depend on exactly what you need and only depend on things that you can trust. Because remember, you don't have to depend on a compromised package in order for that code to get into your system. Remember. If you depend on React, as an example, you depend on anything that they depend on as well. And now you have to trust that they have done their homework and checked all of their dependencies to make sure that none of that is compromised code. Because if it is, you will get it onto your system. Have a great day.